Okay, in this video, we begin to take a look at mechanical waves. Let's immediately begin by asking and answering the following question. What is a mechanical wave? And as we do, by the way, for those of you that are enrolled in Honors Physics AB, this begins Chapter 15. For those of you enrolled in Physics AB, this is the second half of Chapter 11. And for those of you in Conceptual Physics AB, we just continue in this unit. So once again, let's begin by asking and answering the following question. What is a mechanical wave? A mechanical wave is the propagation of energy through an elastic medium. Okay, now there are a couple of terms here in this description to go over. First of all, the phrase elastic medium. An elastic medium is any material that returns to its equilibrium position after it's been disturbed in some manner. Any material returns to its equilibrium position after being disturbed. Okay, all materials are elastic to some degree. For example, take a rubber band and stretch it from its equilibrium position, release, and it returns to its equilibrium position. Take a spring, stretch that from its equilibrium position, release, and it returns to its equilibrium position. Even seemingly very rigid objects are elastic to some degree. Consider, for example, the floor here in this classroom. You wouldn't think of the floor here in this classroom as being similar to, say, a rubber band, but it is. It does have a little bit of give, if you will, associated with it. It actually is an elastic medium. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move close to my phone, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp down really hard on the floor. Okay, watch what happens to the video when I do. I'm gonna stand behind my phone when I do this. Okay, listen and watch, like so. Notice that the video, notice that the film vibrated. And the reason for that is because when I stamped on the floor, I did work. I used energy in doing so. And then the energy that I use propagates through the floor. In other words, because the floor has a little bit of give, because it's an elastic medium, I do work on the first section of the floor, which does work on the next section of the floor, which does work on the next section of the floor, and so on and so on and so on, until ultimately the energy that I used propagated to the foam. We have the word propagation. We use the word propagation here to describe the transfer of energy and not the word movement, for example. And the reason for that is because there's actually nothing moving through the floor. What's actually propagating through the floor is the original energy that I use to stamp down on the floor in the first place. So then therefore, because the floor is an elastic medium, this then allows the transfer of energy through it as a mechanical wave. A single disturbance is referred to as a single mechanical wave pulse. Single disturbance. called a wave pulse. When it comes to the propagation of waves through solid materials, such as the floor, the spring, the rubber band, and so on, there are two basic types of mechanical waves. I'll describe these and demonstrate them in terms of mechanical wave pulses. Okay, so two basic types of wave pulses. The first
first is referred to as a transverse pulse. And the second is called longitudinal. Okay, now I'm gonna demonstrate both of these pulses to you by means of a spring that I have stretched out on the floor. I'll do so in just a few moments. But before I do, let me describe what it is that I am going to do in terms of a simple drawing. So let's say, for example, that right here is the spring and it's laid out on the floor like so, and then I hold on to one end. The other end I have tied to a leg post. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna disturb the spring like so in a direction that is perpendicular to the spring such that ultimately the disturbance then propagates down the length of the spring. And then secondly, with a longitudinal pulse, what I'm gonna do is take the stretched out spring and then pull it towards me in this direction and snap it, let go of it, and then you're gonna see another type of pulse that propagates down the length of spring. Okay, let me go ahead now and demonstrate these two types of pulses to you. So bear with me here, I'm gonna to have to move my phone in order to do so. Okay, so carefully moving my phone here. And I'm gonna to have to tilt it downwards as well, so bear with me. Okay, and now I have my spring laid out here on the floor. Let me go ahead and stretch it out like this. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is take my hand and disturb the spring in a direction that is perpendicular to the spring like so. And then notice that the transverse wave pulse, as, it calls, as it's called rather, propagates down the length of spring. Okay, for the longitudinal wave pulse, what I do is I take the spring and I pull it towards me, and then I snap it like so as I let go of it, like this. This type of wave pulse is referred to as a longitudinal wave pulse. Okay, a couple of other basic properties associated with the wave pulses while I'm here with the spring. First of all, for example, with the transverse pulse, notice what happens to the size of the pulse as time goes on. That is the amplitude, like so. Notice that the amplitude decreases with respect to time, and the reason for that is because the energy is damping out. It is being lost as heat. Notice that the speed of the pulse, however, does not change while the damping occurs. It's a little bit difficult to see just on the spring itself without doing any sorts of measurements, but the speed of the transverse pulse is different than the speed, for example, of the longitudinal pulse. The longitudinal pulse is actually a little bit faster than the transverse pulse. This comes out in the basic physics when you apply F equals MA to such a situation. The speed of the pulse also depends upon the rigidity of the spring, how much tension, for example, is placed upon it. So for example, if I just have a small amount of tension that is placed on the spring, watch what happens to the speed of the transverse wave pulse. Notice that it's quite slow. And now what I'm gonna do is stretch out the spring further, and then I'm gonna go ahead and create another transverse wave pulse like so. If you watch that carefully and compare it to the other one, you'll notice that this wave pulse here is faster than this wave pulse here. This is once again a basic property associated with all mechanical waves. Basically, the greater the rigidity of the medium, the greater the speed of the mechanical wave. Okay, let me go ahead and reposition my phone. So bear with me as I do. I'll tilt it upwards again. Like so. Okay, so now with the transverse wave pulse, after I create the pulse, it then propagates down the length of string, like a length of spring rather, like so. This is the direction of propagation. But if you take a look at an individual piece of the medium, an individual coil of the spring, as the pulse propagates through it, this piece of the spring only moves in a direction like so that is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. That's what is meant by the word transverse. So each section of the medium in a direction perpendicular to the, 
direction of propagation. Okay, that's different from the longitudinal pulse. With the longitudinal pulse, each section of the medium moves in a direction that is parallel to the direction of propagation. So for example, right here is the length of spring. Let's say that right here is a coil of the spring. As the pulse propagates through, this individual coil moves in a direction like so, parallel to the direction of the propagation of the pulse. Once again, the direction of propagation is down the length of spring like so. So each section of the medium here moves in a direction parallel to the direction of propagation when talking about the longitudinal pulse. So each section of the medium moves in a direction parallel to the direction And then hopefully as you were able to discern in my simple demonstration of these two pulses, the longitudinal pulse is a little bit faster than the transverse pulse. The basic physics, once again, when you apply F equals MA to such a situation, they're a little bit different from each other. And then you also notice that the amplitude or size of the wave pulse decrease with time. And the reason for that, once again, is because the energy is being damped out as heat. As the damping occurs and the amplitude decreases, the speed of the pulse, however, does not change. Okay, now accompanying this lecture is a short screencast for you to watch at this time. That screencast in a slow motion version, if you will, depicts very nicely what happens with a transverse wave pulse and a longitudinal wave pulse.